Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part 2 of my full platinum walkthrough for Dark Souls 3. Off to the high wall of Lothric next, the first actual proper place of the game. Hopefully you managed to defeat the Swordmaster at the end of the last video. If you didn't, don't worry, you'll get another crack at him shortly, but you do want to get rid of him pretty soon. So, uh, this is where we left, left off at the end of the last video, so we're in Firelink Shrine. I'm going to teleport to the high wall of Lothric. So, if you've played any of the previous Dark Souls games and not this one yet, then teleporting is available straight away as soon as you light a bonfire you can teleport from it and to it which is i don't know it's kind of good i suppose uh, although in the first one not being able to teleport did you make you sort of explore a bit more uh, right so this is the high wall of lothric there's another bonfire well this is the the first bonfire of the area so make sure you light this and then we're going to go off to the right hand side first uh, and just grab something so you want to go onto this wooden platform and take care of this guy. It's a crossbow guy. If you just go down the stairs, he'll start shooting at you. Uh, and then we have dogs. So the, the tactic I like to do with dogs really is uh, just hold my shield up, let them bang into it, and hit them twice. <laughs> uh, with the shield we're currently using, um, they're going to get some damage through if they do hit you. But don't worry, it's better than getting bitten and... They sort of stun lock you almost, especially if there's more than sort of two or three dogs, they will stun lock you and it's really quite annoying. That was a terrible dodge. So we've got the, the sort of bigger enemies now, and what I like to do with these is try and get behind them and, get, and then backstab them. Uh, and then I'll do a charge R2 to get in a load of damage as they're getting up. So as soon as they sort of hit the floor, if you stand behind them and charge your R2 and uh, you'll get a decent amount of damage on them. This bit here, you saw me quickly run up the stairs, disregard the crossbow guy, and hit that guy that I, that guy on the floor there, that first one that I killed. He will change into a puss of man, I believe they're actually called. Uh, basically what the uh, what Grundir, the first boss that we beat, turned into. He'll turn into one of those. So if you <laughs> hit them quickly, uh, it's like one hit kill and it will stop them doing it. Now, why you would want them to do that is that they will transform and you'll have to kill them. But if you do, um, they will drop a Titanite Shard, which, and uh, an Ember, uh, not an Ember, yeah, Ember, sorry. Uh, the, all the all the games have got different names for the same thing. Uh, yeah, they'll, um, they'll, they'll drop those, but only the first time you defeat them, so you can't farm them or anything. Uh, so if you want one of those, then do that. <laughs> if you're short, if you don't get the random drops the same as I do. Now you saw me look over the edge as I was walking back there. That's a shortcut we'll open up later on. There's a big axe wielding guy down there, so don't go down there just yet. Come back to the bonfire, sit at it to reset the area. We're not going to go back where we just went, so don't worry about the enemies. And then come down here, quickly run to this one. If you see one of those lantern ones, run to it uh, and hit it quickly. Because it will alert all the other enemies. So this one here, you can see he's kind of holding a sword. He would have got alerted and come running after you, along with a guy that's down the stairs behind him. Uh, so yeah, get rid of those guys first. Now you can see me hitting these innocent ones. Uh, don't go down there, go up here. These innocent ones, that's just for souls, really. There's sort of 30 souls each, so it's worth just giving them a quick crack. At this starting point, anyway, there's another Screecher, so quickly get rid of him. There are a bunch of them here. There's uh, three here. There's some on the stairs as well. Right, what I do here is not the thing you should do. So <laughs> I go double-handed and do hit them with an L1, but don't follow up, which was stupid. Because I knew, I don't. as soon as I was starting to do it, I was, I'm going to hit both of them here and wake them both up. That's just stupid. But I did it anyway. Uh, <laughs> get rid of those. And then we're going to go up here and get binoculars. So the reason we went onto that first tower was to grab the longbow. That's going to come in handy. I don't use the longbow often, but it can come in handy with certain enemies and just uh, separating enemies. So if there's some, a lot of enemies pathing around an area, if you fire an arrow into one of them, he'll come after you, leaving the others sort of pathing still. Uh, so, yeah, it's a good way to divide and conquer. So that's what we grabbed. Binoculars are kind of useless unless you want to take in the pretty scenery, which... To be honest, I would do. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Uh, being able to see, you can see everything. Everything you can kind of see will go to eventually. And then we're going to drop down to this secret window, grab the gold pine resin, and uh, kill this guy here. And then this is the stairs that we kind of went down where the screamer was. So we've done a full loop, so you know exactly where we are. So all these would have woken up had that screamer alerted them. The gold pine resin 
is a weapon buff. So the, the great thing about the weapons we're using is that we're going to make them sharp, which means we can still buff them with other stuff. So that stuff we just picked up will add lightning effect to our weapon for a certain amount of time. Now this can help with certain bosses, it's not necessarily lightning, but other buffs that we can get. We can get dark, we can get fire, all sorts of stuff. And then add it to our weapon, and that's going to make them hit even harder against certain enemies, depending if, obviously, if they're, uh, they're weak to it. Uh, some enemies are obviously resistant to things as well. Now what I'm doing up here, as you can see there's a wyvern kind of dropping in. I'm running, <laughs> run, run, run. Uh, and I'm getting to this gate and this door here quickly as possible and rolling through. Now the idea is that the Wyvern would usually breathe fire down and kill pretty much all of the enemies on that sort of area. But he didn't this time and they were too quick. I don't know whether I was too quick uh, going through the gate so they followed me straight away. Uh, but having an axe guy and two little guys is not uh, a good thing. So take care of the smoke that was close. So you can see how effective dodge rolling is. I knew he was coming in to, to hit and I was at the end of my sort of attack animation. So yeah, dodge rolling is always the best. Don't try and hold up against an axe guy, your, your shield that is, because he'll just smash straight through it. Um, yeah, and the idea was co I've come down here. This is our first mimic. So mimics, if you don't know, are chests that will kill you. <laughs> So if the chain is facing forward like that on the right hand side, it's a mimic. Uh, hit it to wake it up and then get the hell out. Now these things are extremely powerful. Uh, they don't look it, they just and they make weird noises like cows, I, I don't know why. Um, but they have an item inside them. They're still a chest essentially, but they have an item inside them. That there is a grab you need to avoid, it will kill you in one go. In fact most of the things these things do will kill you in one go, they'll kick. They'll kind of do karate kicks as well. <laughs> They'll sort of do spin kicks. Uh, don't want them against the wall because you want to try and circle around them. Just keep circling. Look for a little opening. When he does that, he can go in for a couple and then back away. And then usually follows up with another grab if you stood right in front of him. And then, uh, yeah, they do stagger sometimes like that. And what we're looking for is the actual helmet here. So it's called the Symbol of Avarice. Now we can actually farm for it later on. Uh, using something we're actually going to pick up later on but we can purchase an uh, infinite I think it's an infinite amount later on so we'll do the farming of the item that we need later on the symbol of avarice increases increases your item discovery which is going to help with your uh, farming your your uh, covenant items so you may have got it then if you did great that you're lucky <laughs> you may not like I didn't uh, the axe that we got is not particularly helpful. Now you can see there the wyvern's got that area covered now. Um, now you can get rid of the wyvern by shooting arrows at it. A lot of arrows. We don't have that many so we can't really do that. Uh, the only thing on there really that is worth noting the, the items that we saw. I'm not going to go and get them but the uh, claymore is there. That is a sword a lot of people like. Uh, it's kind of a great sword. It's nothing we would use with our build. Um, but if you want the claymore for whatever reason it's up there. Uh, so you can hit the dragon, uh, you can hit it with arrows, we'll be, be able to buy an infinite amount of arrows by the end of this video. So if you want to go back and uh, kill, well you don't kill it, you, you do a certain amount of damage to it and then it flies off, we will kill it later on. Uh, then you can go onto that area safely, grab everything, but I'm not going to bother because we don't need any for trophies or our build, so that's why I'm skipping it. So I got Titanite Shard there, that was a random drop. You may or may not get that. Hopefully you did, because I'm going to use it shortly. Uh, but don't worry if you didn't. You will eventually be able to fully upgrade. But uh, if you did, I'll show you when to upgrade. Now down there, I'm just sort of showing you there's a bunch of enemies that we managed to skip by going running around. Uh, but that's basically where we came down from the bonfire. Uh, and now we're going to go into here. There will be a guy on the left-hand side. I completely forgot about him at the time. He's kind of like a, a stealth thief, almost. He has a knife and he throws throwing knives at you as well. There we go, got some throwing knives. I'm going to go up to our second bonfire for the area. But before lighting it, we're just going to grab this Titanite Shard. This one will definitely be here for you. So we will definitely have two Titanite Shards at this point now. I have three. Uh, I think three, maybe four. No, two or three I've got. Definitely two. Anyway. We're going to go back to Firelink because we don't need to go back to that area we just went to. So the enemy is coming back doesn't matter to us but I'm going to run down to the smith here and upgrade the weapon that we're using just a bit just once uh, well, good, because hitting harder is good so go to reinforce weapon 
look for the twin uh, twin blades, self sword twin blades. Go for one, uh, and there you go. You should definitely have two. We've definitely picked two up. Uh, reinforced Esther's flask. We will be doing that later as well. I don't know why I tried to do it then. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. And that's all we're doing there. Uh, upgrade. Uh, uh, another thing, sorry, when it's not all we're doing. This is actually quite important. Put a point into strength. So you can see 10. If you've got 11 strength, depending on what you're, you're using, then that's great. Uh, if you haven't, get up to 11 strength. You should only need one if you're doing the same as me. And then put the other point into dexterity or health or endurance. Just those main three. Um, yeah, strength. Because we're going to pick up a shield in a moment, which requires 11 strength to wield properly. If you don't, if you're not able to wield something properly, your stamina comes back slower and it, it's completely useless. So if you're holding up a shield that you can't use properly, an enemy will hit it, you'll lose all of your stamina, and you'll become staggered. Not the best, really. So, uh, yeah, you want that 11 strength, and it is a 100% physical shield, so nothing is going to get through. Anymore. Have I got a knife in my head? I think I have. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so grab those firebombs, drop down on that first guy there, and kill the second one. This ladder will go down later on. I have got a knife in my head. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll go down there later on There's a cell down there with an NPC, but we don't have the key yet. So we'll, we'll do all that once we get the key Another soul here. So these souls I'm picking up these hard souls use them to fill in So if you're leveling up and you're you're just short or you need to buy something use them They're only worth 200 these little ones that we're grabbing at the moment Watch out for these two guys. So you're gonna have one couple of ladder in front of you and one to the right hand side Don't worry this dragon doesn't wake up and then drop down same thing again, this is a puss of man. He's kind of in the middle. You can see him just at the peak of the roof there. Run and that one there. Hit him. You can see he's kind of changing. Hit him quickly before he changes. You don't want to fight one of them. Same applies though. If you want him to change, if you need another Titanite shard, then get him to change and uh, kill him. It will take a while though. Now, Crystal Lizards are back, of course. The the big one we fought right at the beginning is not the only type. The good thing about... The, actually, the great thing about Crystal Lizards now is that uh, if they fall off a ledge and die, you still get the item. So I've got a raw gem there. We need to infuse one... We need to use each infusion once. So a raw gem is a type of infusion. We can't do infusions yet. Uh, so another thing about crystal, crystal lizards is they will disappear, so you need to run after them quickly. If you're not quick enough, they'll kind of just disappear, and you'll have to reset the area and come back to get them. And you want to grab that raw gem. Now, to, what you do with raw gems is you would infuse it, uh, and it would turn the weapon into a raw weapon, which is good uh, if you're not concentrating on strength or dex or anything like that. It removes uh, scaling pretty much. So it improves the, the way the weapon is as a base weapon, but scaling is kind of not a thing anymore. So it can be if you're not kind of concentrating on either of those, but we are, so we're not going to use it. And we're just going to clean that. So we've got black firebombs as well, which are better than the regular ones. There's a big guy down there. We're going to kill him later. That is a, a, the reason we went and got the bow as well, another reason. So you can actually start hitting him from up here, so we'll show you the bow. I'm not going to equip it yet, but if you put it in your left hand, your off hand, I find it's better to put it there. Uh, I don't know why. I just have it, I suppose. But we'll get closer down to him and do it then. So quickly run up here. Quickly get this guy. And there's going to be a guy following you up the stairs as well. He was hiding around the corner. Through here. There's going to be another one. I thought he was on the other side, but he wasn't. He was there. Uh, and yes, another Titanite shard. So we're collecting more. Uh, I will have four shortly. So I'll be able to upgrade again. Uh, if you haven't, maybe do the Pusser Man or wait. You can wait. Honestly, you can wait. So these Undead Hunter charms that we just picked over here, these two, these are the things we will use to farm um, a Mimic chest later on to try and get the Symbol of Avarice. Because it used to be a guaranteed drop. I don't think it is in this one, but I know you can farm for it. So that's what we'll be doing. Because uh, what that does, it, it basically puts the... Uh, the chest back to sleep and you can get a re-roll what's going to come out of the chest almost uh so yeah we'll uh using those now this guy it was annoying the hell out of me these uh these lothric knights are usually fairly simple the guys with the swords are fine but these ones look at him because <laughs> they have this great shield if they hit you with the great you can't hit them on their their side 
Um, what I'm trying to do, and not very well at all, is get behind him. That's the easiest way. He's not he's not having any of it. So the ones with the great shields, these ones, will use it as a weapon. As you can kind of see, he's pushing it towards me. So that's what we want. And uh, no, <laughs> not having it. He is not having it at all. And obviously holding up against him is just going to hurt me. So that's what we want him to do that so he doesn't have the shield in his hand meaning he can't hit us with it straight away because he will as soon as you're behind him he'll twist around and hit you um, if you're quick enough you can get uh, going on him if, if he attacks maybe try and don't try and go for the backstab and attack him just get try, try it that was bad as well oh god uh, yeah I, I don't know why I, I walked past I should have just let him hit the shield anyway broadsword it's just a broad sword. If you want to use a broad sword, go for it. But most importantly, what we're going to get next is the silver eagle kite shield, which is 100% physical. I'll go down there afterwards because it's kind of you're uh, committed to dropping down if you go that way. So we're not going to do that. We're going to go this way. That is a room of death to the left hand side. So don't go down there just yet. Go this way and grab the silver eagle kite shield. And I'll quickly explain about um, burden, item burden. Uh, I can't remember the phrase. It'll, it'll come up with equipment load. <laughs> so grab the shield uh, and we'll go to equipment load in a moment. So you can see equip load. I will go back to the menu in a moment. You can see equip load in the bottom right hand corner. It goes off percentages. So you will have an equipment load and you can equi equi increase your equipment load by leveling up vitality. Uh, so I'm going to go back to it now. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner it says equipment equipment load. So 29 of 50. So that's obviously above sort of uh, 25, 30%. So at 30% you're rolling really quickly and you have a certain amount of iframes, the most amount I think. Uh, 30 to 70 you're at medium, that's kind of where you want to be. That's where I am. You'll roll a decent uh, speed and your uh, iframes are the same so they're nice and quick you have quite a few of them uh, if you go above that you're above 70 percent of your equipment load you'll start fat rolling moving slower endurance doesn't come back as quickly uh, stamina even uh, and you'll have fewer iframes and it's just a pain really um, and if you go above 100 then you just can't move <laughs> no you can't roll you can't run you can't do anything so what you want to do is balance that number. So it only goes off your equipment load, what you've got equipped. So you can carry as many items as you like in this game, but anything that is equipped will add to that number. So what I'm doing here actually is I'm just quickly removing the bow. Well, I'm actually okay on my percentage still. Uh, I was removing it because of the equipment load that I'm just talking about, but I'm actually okay. I'll check it later on. So there, when I was saying before using the bow, uh, to get their attention, so I quick, I slowly went down, got the dog's attention, came back up, and I uh, got that that other guy's attention. I know if I come this way, I'm okay because it'll just be this one with the uh, the axe. Again, try and circle them. The ones with the axes are really slow; they commit to their attacks and they get sort of stuck with it on the floor. And then this one has an axe. Don't go too far. There's a dog down the stairs to the left. Just get him to come to you. The barrels on the the right here, they are explosive. But getting the fire bombs to to line up—that wasn't very good, was it? Line up. Uh, it's you're just going to waste your fire bombs. You're better off just divide and conquer, and uh, try and get the backstabs, and then do a charged R2 to kind of finish them off. Charge R2 and one should do it. I get another Titanite shard as a random drop here, and then there's one in here as well. So that's me back up to four. I'm able to upgrade again, which I will do. There's a dog down here. And this is the cell key for the cell that I mentioned earlier. So we'll go back to that tower uh, and free the prisoner. And there we go. And then we're going to get our first Estus shard. So this is how we upgrade the Estus flask back at the smith. Uh, each shard that we use will allow us another use of the Estus flask. So it'll go up to five once we upgrade it. And that's uh, where we're going now. No, I'm not, that's not where we're going at all. I'm going back up the stairs to get that item I mentioned earlier on. So Green Blossom and the Astora Straight Sword. If you want to use them, I mean, you, you're obviously free to play around with the build however you want to do it. 
I'm just bringing you the simplest, kind of most diverse one, I think, for a, a starter uh, with the whole shield, or you can go straight in with the double. Um, yeah, it, I think it's definitely the simplest to sort of play around with. You're only worrying about three stats. You don't have to worry about spells and magic and that. But if you want to go for all that, obviously go for it. Uh, Green Blossom allows um, is a consumable that makes your stamina come back quicker for a certain amount of time. Now this is a uh, <laughs> this is a winged knight. Well, kind of. He's kind of got his wings clipped. He's like a junior winged knight. You'll see the proper ones a lot later on. These guys hurt a lot. Obviously, you can imagine the size of that halberd he's carrying. So what we're going to do is cheese him, basically. You can go down and fight him, and usually I would, but for the sake of a guide and showing you the easiest way to do this, uh, this is the way we're doing it. It's quite hard to aim down. You can't aim any further down with the bow. You'll have to wait for him to move. He will reset and just kind of forget you and carry on. And uh, yeah, just with the bow. So put it in your hand, and you'll, you'll, need, you'll need to hold L1 and R1 to hold L1, and then uh, that'll bring up the reticle, and then R1 to hold it back and then fire. So wait for him. You can do a plunging attack on him now if he's kind of low. You'll be fine because we are going to drop down there anyway. But uh, yeah, they do a spin attack which will just annihilate you. It will just go straight through your shield. And if you're low on Estus like I am, it's just not worth it. You can also run past him and get open up the shortcut. There we go. So there's also a guy directly below us. So that's another reason not to sort of drop. Here's where I check my equipment load. I'm actually okay with the bow equipped. Well, uh, I'll remove it for now. Now we'll drop down. And watch out the guy behind you. And then grab the rapier, which is obviously a, uh, a stabby sword. <laughs> different types of damage, again. So you have slash, you have thrust. Different enemies are weak to different types of, enemy, uh, types of weapon. So we're kind of using a slash. Uh, the rapier is obviously a thrust. And that item we're going to go and get in a moment, that's the Ring of Sacrifice. One of the rings we obviously need. And we're going to open up a shortcut back to the very first bonfire for the area. Which is the best part of Souls games. I love finding these. Well, not, you don't find them, but you just kind of eventually get back. Go full circle, and it's that aha moment. So grab that. And this is quite a tricky jump. But we'll wait till right to the edge and jump across. That was probably a bit uh, too soon still. Ring of Sacrifice. Now, uh, don't put that on. What the Ring of Fa Sacrifice does is, uh, that's kind of an emergency ring. Um, if you've got loads of souls, you think you might die, you're kind of stuck in an area, you'd put the Ring of Sacrifice on, and if you do die, you don't lose your souls, but the ring breaks. So it's kind of a one-time use. We'll get more than one of those. I don't use them, really. I've never felt I needed to. Uh, that was a bit tricky. So if you don't want to take these guys on, run straight ahead and go for the lift. If you are low on Estus and health, straight on and run onto this. And as soon as you're at the top and have um, open the gate, you have the shortcut open. Doesn't matter if you die after that, which you might do. Some throwing knives. I'm not saying you will, but you might, because there's one of those axe guys to the left-hand side. You can see me kind of creeping. See him where he is. He's fast. He's really fast. So quickly run up the stairs. And then you'll know to kind of recognize where we are. This was close as well with these uh, these dogs. And there's the uh, the guy with the crossbow behind. So that some crossbow like this one here, or the bow, whatever he's using, um, have fire. Now you can hold up your shield against them and you'll stop all the physical damage that that arrow's doing. But because it has fire damage on it as well, that will still come through your shield. So you need to be aware. So different shields have different levels of fire and magic uh, damage resistance. So we'll play around with shields later on. Upgrading a shield doesn't really do much apart from improve your poise, which means you get staggered less. So I am able to level up my uh, twin blades again. If you are, do it. If you're not, don't worry too much. Um, you'll just be able to do it eventually. We'll be picking up loads, hundreds of titanite shards, hundreds of large titanite shards, hundreds of all sorts of things, so don't worry about it. Uh, and then upgrade your Estus, so we will now have five uses of it. And then use anything else for leveling. 
because we're about to do the boss for the area very sh very soon. So a bit of vigor. Uh, the, I like to go up to vigor, so health up to about 20, endurance up to about 20 or so, uh, and then obviously doing dex in between that. Par primarily dexterity is what we want. And then after that, once we're at a, a certain decent level with, from, with dexterity, then we'll start putting more into uh, endurance up to about 40. Well, at 40, because that is the cap. You won't get any more stamina after that. So we've gone back to the, the tower, the second bonfire now. And we're going to go down to this prison cell. And uh, free this guy down here. Now the guy down here is going to give us a ring. He's also going to go back to Phylinx Shrine and become a merchant who you can buy arrows off. Infinite amount of arrows. They cost 10 each. So yeah, uh, that's actually quite good. If you if you want to start cheesing enemies and that, then uh, yeah, arrows, you want a, a healthy amount of them. Uh, I don't personally do that often, probably at all, but it's for a starter, for a beginner, if you are a beginner, it's going to help a lot. But I would also, on the same token kind of thing, don't get rely on that, don't get used to that, because you will uh, not gain the experience of fighting enemies, and you need that more than anything. That's why I said do Swordmaster. Yes, he was tough, if you managed to do him or not. If you did, you have that experience, now you know how enemies work, you'll have a better idea of things. Ah. You're no jailer, are you? So this guy here, we've got the, the cell key, so we've opened it up, go through all of his uh, dialogue and then grant his request, uh, and then he's going to uh, give you the blue tear stone ring. Now you can actually equip the blue tear stone ring if you want, it just improves your damage, resistance or absorption when your health is low. It's something we will quickly replace anyway, once we have better rings, so you want to put it on, put it on, don't worry it won't break if you use it. There's only the Ring of Sacrifice that does that. Now we're pretty much ready for the boss. That gate over there we can't open yet. We will be able to eventually. There's a tough enemy down. Well, tough early game enemy. Later on he's not tough. And we'll go back to the bonfire and warp. Back to the first one and use that shortcut to go and get to the boss. There are actually two bosses for this area. You can start a late game boss by doing something, <laughs> killing a certain NPC, which we're not going to do. But there is a way of uh, getting into the late game area early on. <laughs> but definitely not going to do that. The Dancer of the Boreal Valley is probably the boss I dislike the most in this game. It's the hardest to read, I find. It took me a long time to be able to do it solo. Uh, another thing as well, when we get to the boss, um, I will explain about summons. So do not feel like you have to solo bosses. I don't... I do some bosses because there's no option. Some bosses it's just easier. But what if you're able to do it, if you are online and have um, the ability to summon in another player who has an orange golden glow around their kind of summon sign, do it. Because you're going to get... If they survive the fight, then you are going to get a Sunlight Medal, and that's one of the Covenant items, and it's the easiest way to get them. To help other players, or have other players help you. Otherwise, farming them is it's actually one of the worst ones to farm, to be honest. I'm going back down the lift, and take it easy. I want as much Estus as I can. Green Blossom. So I was hoping these guys wouldn't come after me and I could just leave it, but I don't want them following me, so just get rid of them, they're only one hit kills. And then we're back around here. So yeah, don't try and um, block arrows. You can block swords, obviously that's all physical damage, but I always find it better. Like Arrows are really easy to dodge, you can just kind of step around them. And uh, yeah, so here there will be a summon sign if you're embered. I'm not embered right now. So I'm going to give you two options. There's going to be a summon sign there, or you can come down and get a summon sign. You can't see it because I'm not embered. So I'm going to go down there and actually show you where it is. So don't suicide run down here like I'm doing. Just stay at the top. I'm going to give you two options. What you don't want to do really is have two summons into a boss fight. 
because every time you bring a summon in, uh, the health, the boss, the boss's health goes up a percentage. I think it's like fifty percent or so. So the more people you bring in, the more health it gets. It just becomes not worth it. So use an ember, and you'll become restored. And then you can see this is Swordmaster. If you killed him, if you didn't kill him, he will not be there. That was terrible. Uh, I forgot about this guy up here. To be honest, should have killed him on the way down. Um, so he's one option, Swordmaster. He's quite good. He's quite defense. A lot more defensive than he is against you. That's for sure. Uh, so that was one of the reasons to kill him. The main reason is for another boss later on. Or you can come up here and have Lionheart. Al is it Albert? I find him better. I have no idea who this is. I think this is a random player. It looks kind of like me, so I'm guessing it is. Lion Knight Albert. So I'm actually going to see. He actually he doesn't have that golden. That's just a yellow type summon. If that was golden, uh, then it would be worth bringing him in and having him help you with the boss because you'll get a uh, sunlight medal but we'll do that later on just always be aware of it another thing with embers as well you can obviously run out so if you think you're going to die a lot uh, before bringing a summon in back up your save quit out the game uh, which you do another thing I've not mentioned is quit out when quitting out of game uh, go to the main the menu by using the touchpad go to the right hand side and do quit game that from there. Don't just turn the game off. Uh, quit game. Uh, do a backup save. And then uh, come back in. And then summon. You can't quit game if you summon someone. That's how the game kind of works. Uh, yeah, if you think you're going to run out of embers. Uh, you can farm embers from those two Lothric knights we were just killing. But it takes a while and they're a bit of a pain in the ass. You don't want to run out. We'll have plenty. You just kind of don't want to run out. This guy has got red eyes, so obviously that means he's a lot more difficult because that's what that means. Uh, and he is. He he ta he has a lot of health and he hits pretty hard. That was, I think, that, no, that wasn't through a shield. It wouldn't have been. Anyway, he drops the refined gem. So that is why we've killed him. That is a um, another infusion that we're going to use later on, so we do need that gem. The refined one, uh, I think that's for quality, if I remember rightly, that's quality builds. So, somebody who's concentrating on both strength and dexterity at the same time, it's for that. We're not going to use that one. So, speak to Emma here. You're going to get the, the small Lothric banner. And then, if you speak to her again, you'll join the Covenant Way of Blue. So, you'll get the trophy for that as well. And you'll get the Way of Blue Covenant item. So, if you have that item equipped and you have a Red Phantom, so another player annoying you or whatever... They will, it will, the game will kind of automatically look for other members and they'll bring them into your game so they can help you. That's essentially what it is. It's kind of co op. I don't use it. Obviously, feel free to do it yourself. Uh, so, the second boss you can kind of trigger was in that room. That's why Albert couldn't come into that because it's actually a boss arena. Uh, summons can't come into a boss arena unless the, the fight is in full swing and has started. So, that's why he couldn't come in and was kind of stuck on the door. Uh, yeah, if you kill Emma, the Dance of the Boreal Valley will start, and that is a not a boss fight you want to do now. And don't kill uh, Emma, because the guy that we've got summoned right now will uh, go home. He won't stay around. These guys are annoying. I always find the ones with spears or pikes or, or whatever, long weapons, are the most annoying ones to fight. Swords are okay, because they're, they're quite uh, active. And they'll come after you. But the ones with the swords and the pikes and what have you, halberds, they sit behind the, their big shields and try and shield break you, like push you back. There's another raw gem. That was quite unexpected, to be honest. So, yeah, this sword master will be here still. Don't bring him in. If you've already got this one, don't bring it. Uh, if you've got Albert, don't bring sword master in as well. So, Albert can't enter this room yet because this is the boss fight. This is Vort of the Burial Valley. So we'll get his trophy and his soul. Do not spend boss souls once we've defeated him. So run to the door, the cutscene will play, and we'll be in full swing. Pretty simple fight. Looks really imposing. It actually is if you stay in front of him. Just don't stay in front of him. <laughs> uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm not moving towards him because I want uh, Albert to sort of come in. His, you can see how slow his attacks are. Uh, he builds up quite a lot. You can just dodge through them. 
Uh, I've gone two-handed here. I'm completely stuck underneath him, which is actually fine. Being stuck underneath or behind him is fine because he, he doesn't really get you. Uh, he does use frost damage, which you can see me take shortly. Uh, and then after a certain amount of health, he will lose his mind and start running around. And that's when you need to be a bit more cautious and back away. And uh, yeah, you see him running a bit. He will do a series of charges sometimes, or sometimes he'll just do the one and swing around a bit. And then you just want to try and sit behind him and not get hit. So you'll see frost damage happen in a minute. So he's going to slam down there. You can see it kind of build up. So once that, that purple bar that is, once that builds up to full, you'll take an amount of damage. Frost damage is not that bad. This was, I thought I died here. I don't know how I avoided that attack. It definitely hit me. I think I must have just put my shield up. I, I swear I died. Uh, I was not paying attention for a moment there. Slow, and all of a sudden he's quick. So those charges he does uh, can be a bit of a pain. But get behind him, sit underneath him, and he should be uh, simple enough in the end. And uh, yeah, that's another boss fight over. That's this area done, although we will be back here. This is kind of a T-junction, if you want to think of it as that. We'll be going past Emma to get to the late game stuff later on. So sit at the bonfire, refresh, and then I'm actually going to go to the next area briefly. Look at that, that looks amazing. So if you walk to the end, you'll see the raise banner option. Press X to raise the banner. You'll get the little gargoyles turn up from the first game and they'll drag you over. I think they're imps, gargoyles, whatever they are. And uh, drop you into the next area, which is Undead Settlement. This is obviously going to be the next video. I'm not going to do this now. But what I'm just doing is running down here to start off our ending basically. I'm going to go and get another NPC. So if you run down here, these guys won't bother you, don't worry about these guys. What will attack and bother you are these three dogs. So while they are attacking the others, they're, they're sent out here to attack these, these random guys. So while they're doing that, run around and try and kill at least one or two of them uh, before they gang up, because three dogs on you is no joke, it's not fun at all. And they will probably all die. But anyway, that's fine. Run past this carriage on this side, on the left hand side. There are two dogs here. A simple L1 will kill them both. And you're going to grab Alluring Skulls. So Alluring Skulls are a, a consumable, a chuckable item. Uh, it's good for NPCs. You can make them run off cliffs. So that's what we'll be using those for. So as I said at the start, uh, using cliffs. We'll be, we will be be using cliffs, don't worry. And then one of these guys here, you can just see it kind of moving. Uh, speak to him now. He is very important to our ending. So speak to him, let him do his thing, and then and then agree to have him come back. So accept his services, and then he will just disappear. And do that weird Dark Souls thing, like the guy that was in prison. He will just disappear. I don't know why he couldn't do it earlier. <laughs> it happens more than once. People trapped in prison, you free them by opening the door, and then they just disappear. Okay. So he will off you pop, and he'll be back at Phylink. So that's what we've come down here to do, is just get him to come back. And uh, we'll just go through this portcullis here, get to the next bonfire, which is, is, is literally just through here. And we'll go back and finish off in Phylink. So yes, Yol is part of the ending. We are after the, the us usurpation ending. He is the beginning of it. We'll be, even be using him in uh, New Game Plus and Plus Plus. He gives you fa five free levels, which is great. <laughs> so if we run down here, we're going to go and see Grey Hat. No, Grey Wolf. Grey Rat. <laughs> there we go. Grey Rat, the guy we got out of prison, is going to be down here now. Oh, hello. You're back. So we'll speak to him. He'll talk to you about uh, Rosario. Rosario. Rosaria? Rosario? Rosaria. Anyway, he wants you to give her that ring. We'll do all that later on. That kind of clashes with uh, another quest that we've got going on, so don't worry about it. We'll, we'll jiggle them around so they don't affect each other. And then he has arrows for sale at the bottom. So I don't buy any yet, and I will actually buy some at the beginning of the next video because I should have bought some. Buy some, buy, I don't know, have maybe 100, something like that. 
or after you've upgraded, you've got any souls left, uh, spend them on arrows. Anyway, uh, he's going to give us a, a, a gesture later on, but for now we're going to go and speak to uh, Yol here. And he's going to have one of his options will be to... Um, I can't remember the phrasing. Draw out true strength. There we go. Draw out true strength. So do that and you're going to get a free level from him. So obviously use it. Dex, Endurance, Vigor, whichever one. Uh, now we need to use all five of these levels before we fight a certain boss to carry the ending on. But these levels are obviously free. Making the, the ones after it cost more. So you can use this to use it on later levels just before um, you actually hit until he disappears because once you use all five he dies and disappears so another thing is we need to do is buy his all of his sorceries so buy his most expensive sorcery as well uh, and then every time you die you can now go back to him and get another level you can't do them all at once uh, but every time you die go back to him get another level don't do, try and do them all at once because you'll make the others more expensive. It's better off to buy the cheaper ones and then come back and get free expensive ones, if that makes sense. And then after you've done that, talk to him. Go to the option talk. Talk to him. Exhaust his dialogue. Uh, and you'll get the beckon gesture. And that's it for this video. So buy arrows. I'll do that at the beginning of the next one. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.